What, what's the latest news from the DCF? Well, we have uh, ENL1 and ENL2 trials the first two weeks of June. Um, so that's an important uh, uh, understanding as to how we're going to go forward on that front. So uh, yes, it's the National Ice Hockey League now as opposed to the English National League, uh, a name change since last season. But um, um, it's going to come down to, to numbers and, and supply. You know, I think that uh, we have opened it up to all the players and to our our hockey community here to suggest that we want to operate ENL1 and ENL2. That's our most uh, uh, preferred position. It's what we would like. I think it gives the benefit to Jared to have more players at a, at a higher level of senior hockey in which to choose and which to, uh, to be able to have coming through the system. But it's all going to come down to what we can actually afford. And, and I think there's some movement from the players as to some of the real fixed costs, i.e. transportation. I mean, ice time we need, but transportation and finding ourselves, to getting ourselves to our away games is something that we can adjust and, and we can find better solutions for. So that's that's what we're looking at as far as on the top end of the sport um, within Cardiff here for ice hockey. But at the bottom end, uh, we're looking at the opportunity to have uh, two under 10s teams this season. The under 10s have a tournament in Sheffield this weekend, which is great. I'll be up there with uh, the under 10s coach as well. But um, looking to be able to have potentially an under 8s slash under 10s and another under 10s team. So, so sort of a, a, a mix between uh, the ages, really. I don't know if we've got enough to have an under 8s exclusive team, but I think we're close. And uh, so it'll probably be two under 10s teams like Swindon did last year, and it just helps us to build from the bottom up. So it's trying to address both issues and then meet in the middle and, and make sure the club is strong as possible throughout. Okay, just, do you want to touch on the synthetic project we've got? Yeah, no. We, have a, we actually just started over the last couple of weeks a, a, a rink up in uh, Getley, if you want to say it correctly. Is that uh, Getley? It's close enough. It's close Getley. enough. And, um, but. but it's, uh, yeah, Eskimo Joe's. They have a synthetic ice rink in the valleys, and um, uh, Adam Bailey, our under 10s uh, coach, who would be our under 8s coach next year, and myself have been up there starting, a, a, you know, sort of a level one to level 10 uh, skating course. That's uh, just trying to introduce youngsters into it, and ideally, we'd like to feed them into the rink here, and and then start to cultivate interest uh, at that grassroots level to get them into hockey after a little bit of a, you know, a, a running start by having a chance to start, you know, getting the basics in. You know, at this at this uh, facility in the valley, so it's great. It's a it's a great start. It's another stepping stone and another level, another layer in what we do that helps us to just be stronger. The other thing, just very quickly, in terms of DCF, I just wanted to thank the um, the coaches and managers in terms of their efforts and getting through a bit of a turbulent time. As you know, we've been interrogating that that whole setup and looking at ways in which we can improve it. And some of the positive things that have come out is we've um, we've been able to address much of the debt issue that existed. There's now um, pretty much down to uh, quite a minimal amount, but also um, we're at a point where we are meeting with all of the managers and coaches uh, uh, with effect, what first Friday, second Friday of every month, and so those monthly meetings are vital in terms of making sure we can enhance our communication levels so that we can address these issues quickly, efficiently, and, and, and make sure as well that we focus very much on the fundraising aspect because we are a charity, you know, we're supposed to be raising more funds, it's an expensive sport, so by zoning in and spending our energy doing that, not spending our energy doing administrative things, um, do, do <coughs> get out there like uh, the Gatley project that we're running is, is a great way of us actually you know, generating more fans. And like I said before, this is all about taking a, a sort of five to ten year view. We've got two packs come in, we want to grow the fan base, we want to build the team, we want to bring more talent coming through. And all this is actually vital seeds that need to be sown to ensure that we've got that going forward. Things like the synthetic project obviously help advertise uh, ice sports and um, from the community side of things, what, what plans are in the pipeline for the DCF to, to, to reach out to the community of South Wales away from the, the huge job of, of organising and running the NIHL and, and the junior setup? Well, I, I mean, there's a number of events. We have an event uh, with the South Wales Police at Pentwin Leisure Centre next weekend. This weekend, the focus is going at the Sheffield Tournament. The following weekend, the 16th and 17th, there's a Sully uh, Festival, football festival. The 23rd and 24th, we're in the castle of June. Um, then the following weekend we might have a weekend off. Next one we're doing at uh, uh, Sony. We have in Pencoid a, a, a corporate day that we're involved with. And um, but in between all those weekends we have all of our teams going up and competing in Sheffield. We have another uh, little mini tournament we're earmarking here for the 21st and 22nd of July, trying to get our youngsters in in another opportunity here, 10s, 12s, and 14s. So. 
um, you know, there's a number of things still in the pipeline as far as support and sponsors and just solidifying probably our junior learn to play program, looking at our, our timetable of training and making sure that we can make the whole business stack up and offer <coughs> everybody as best as possible what they need. And um, we want to give everybody what, what they would like. And I think we've been a little bit of a victim of trying to be all things to all people. And sometimes you just have to focus that a little bit better with better priority and, and what you can achieve. But in fairness, uh, as we've cut our cloth accordingly, we actually realize if we're a little bit more efficient, we can get all the things we would like just in a more productive way.